Leute, heute sind wir in Hamburg und wir haben uns gerade mal für den zweiten Teil von Mittelerde, Mordor, mal die Schatten des Krieges angeschaut und mein Gott, war das blutig. Ähm, wir haben jetzt einen sehr interessanten Gast und da hoffe ich mal, ich erfahre ein bisschen was mehr über das Spiel. So, hi, nice to meet you, nice for your time. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you for your time. Would you like to please introduce yourself? Sure. And just a few words about what you do. Sure. Um, my name is Kevin Steffens, and I'm the studio head at Monolith Productions, and uh, I oversee development on uh, Middle Earth: Shadow of War. Oh, yeah. It's coming in August, isn't yes. it? Oh, yes. Oh, it's not that much time. No. <laughs> All right. Um, what we will get presented today was um, a siege on. Uh, sort of orc castle, mm -hmm. um, we have to invade it, we have to kill a lot of orcs <laughs> and uh, we can get this castle as our home castle. Mm -hmm. So um, is this all? No. Is there a campaign? Is there yes. a story? Yes. Yes. So uh, like Shadow of Mordor, uh, everything you can do in the sandbox is still in Shadow of War. So in uh, Miller's Shadow of Mordor, we had two regions, and in uh, Shadow of War, there we have today we showed five different regions. And so there is a much larger world. Every region has all of the sandbox activities that we had in the last game. So all of the side missions, the collectibles, exploration, uh, the missions with uh, the uh, orcs, so the power struggles where you know you can fight different orcs, you can have the orcs fight each other, um, and then of course the story missions, and so we have a much bigger, deeper, epic story which we tease a little bit in the beginning where you see a couple of characters that are in the story, uh, obviously the Witch King, uh, the Nazgul, Sauron, you know, so we have all of the big baddest enemies that you fight and you, you get to encounter and interact with um, and, and some uh, other special enemies that we are not talking about yet. So oh. there's, uh, it's, a, it's a huge world and a huge story. So the, the way to think of the fort assault is that that's just one mission. In, that's basically, you'd be playing in a region for many, many hours, doing all sorts of other activities, and then at the end, you would fight and conquer the fortress, and then there'd be more activities, and then you'd have defense missions, uh, and then there'd be other regions, there'd be story missions, so it goes on and on and on. So it's very, very epic, very big. Oh, that sounds big. You're battling Sauron at the end? Yes. Ah! Absolutely. Yay! I'd like to play it. Um, <laughs> of course. Right, uh, so um, we saw on the demo that the fortresses get a level, mm -hmm. and there's some level 100, 101, and nearly 300 end. So uh, what, is it, uh, what is it? Is it your progress? So if you want to get to another region, the fortresses and the enemies will be higher leveled, mm -hmm. so you're naturally cut up from... Yeah, the, the, uh, the fortress, the level of the fortress is based on all of the war chiefs and the overlords level. And so as you play the game, the, the, what, the army screen is constantly churning as time goes by, new enemies come in, enemies leave. And so the different regions start out at kind of different difficulties, but as you play the game, they can get harder and harder. Um, and so it's kind of an endless curve where you, know, you can take a fortress and then later at the end of the game, there's kind of a mode where the fortresses get attacked by Sauron and so you have to defend the fortresses and you can retake the fortress and there's kind of an elder game that, exp uh, that we're not going into too much detail about now, but there is an elder game after the story campaign of defense and, uh, and conquering of the fortresses. So really open world. Yes. Yes, our goal with this game is for people to play it as long as they want and to be very satisfied. So we, we hope people will play much longer than they played the first game. Wow, first game was long. <laughs> um, right, um, I think this is a perfect game for an online mode. You can talk about that? I can't today. Uh, we're, not, we're not discussing that today. Even if there will be one or not? No, I ja. can't. I okay. can't say okay. sorry. Okay. No, but um, I think there is one. Just my opinion. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, talking a little bit about the skill trees. Mm -hmm. It was very well in the first game mm -hmm. with all the things you can do with your shadow image and your warrior strength. Right. You told about us. Uh, you told us about a, a more diverse skill tree. 
Any information? Yeah, so uh, we're not going into specifics about all of the different skills, but I can say that every, every uh, category from uh, combat to stealth to the wraith skills to kind of the monster skills, all of those categories exist. They're deeper. They're, it's a much bigger, deeper tree than we had in the first game. Um, but that's all we're saying at this point. So oh, right. we, we definitely have expanded. Everything is bigger and deeper and more. That's, that was, that's why it's war. It's war this time. It's okay, big. It's war. <laughs> um, and you've got a lot of uh, RPG elements mm -hmm. deepened, like, like, uh, like uh, uh, doing your own uh, armor and weapons. And yep. um, there are different categories, mm -hmm. like, like elite or normal. Or yes. Yes, so we're, again, we're not going into great detail, but I can say that it's a fully fleshed out gear system that you would find in any RPG as far as the attributes on the gear, uh, levels of the gear, uh, different categories of gear, um, the different types of gear across uh, the different um, uh, looks um, from different areas that the gear comes from, so not all the gear looks exactly the same. Um, and we're not talking about all the different types of gear at this point, but it's it's a it's a fully fleshed out RPG gear system, loot system. Nice, and yeah. of course it's very gory. Very gory. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you've got more executions. You've got bloodier executions. Uh, well, we you know we are, try to stay within what we think is you know kind of realistic, but. You know, we uh, we do consider the content to be a mature content, um, and you know we you know what you saw in the demo. It's many hours in. You have lots of skills, and so uh, you know uh, our demoer was was doing lots of kind of the more you know kind of gory aspects. But uh, it's uh, it's it's very similar to the first game in that cool. respect. I think that people like it. I hope so. <laughs> I um, there was a uh, boss battle mm -hmm. to the Overlord. Overlord is a new category mm -hmm. of orcs who are higher than the war chiefs from the first yes. game. Um, I thought it was an own battle arena mm -hmm. with minions and a uh, boss coming to you, but there was help, unexpected help for me. Yes. So, um, do you have got scripted things in your boss battles? They're or? not scripted. Uh, there's, uh, you have the ability as the player to uh, slot a bodyguard. So you can take one of your followers and make him a bodyguard, and then you can call him into the fight. And it's Anytime. on. A, uh, yes, there's a cooldown. So ah, once right. once you've called him in, uh, if he like he gets scared away and leave, or you could leave him, like he could be fighting and then you leave. It takes a while before you can call him back to you again. Uh, so in the boss arena, in the demo, you see where you're fighting and you're about to go down, you call him in and he comes in and saves you. So uh, yeah, so the, you can slot followers as bodyguards. Um, and then in general, uh, when you go on the assault, the, you bring followers with you and you pick which followers to bring. We skipped that for the demo. We didn't show that uh, user interface screen, but you actually have an opportunity to look at the defenses of the fortress, look at your followers, change them, and then you know you can actually augment your followers too. You can um, you can spend your in-game currency to give them uh, better uh, uh, offenses uh, to uh, attack the fort. So you tell me you're going RTS? No, it's not. It's not RTS. It's uh, maybe light. You could say it's light strategy, but we we're very much an action game. Like we don't like your followers. We don't want you to micromanage your followers. You just you call them in. They are fully autonomous. You don't have. You can ignore them, and they'll fight, and they'll follow you. They'll do the right things. We don't want you to be. You know, it's not a strategy game where you have to. You know, micromanage, and and we don't want you to worry about that. Um, the same with the fortresses. As you play through the campaign, you don't have to worry once you've taken a fortress that you're going to lose it. It's only in the elder game where, if you choose to play the elder game, where it's more of a strategy game um, of. Defense, defense against your fortresses. So in the normal game, you've got a fortress. Mm -hmm. keep yeah, once you get the fortress, you keep it. Yeah, there's I, there's one mission that teaches you how to defend, but other than that one mission, you just keep the fortresses. Once you once you take it, the hard part's taking them. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Um, maybe uh, we go to the last question. Okay. Um, I see you can get orcs. The blue ones, mm -hmm. blue signs, can also fight for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I know from the first game you can get your skills and say, "Hey, now, now you're mine." Right, right. Um, 
is it deepened too, so you can get your big army and yes. very things with it? A few words. Sure. Sure, so uh, in the first, in Shadow of Mordor, you could dominate guys, but they were pretty much just, you, almost like you brainwashed them and they were just dumb. They would just kind of, they'd follow you and they'd fight, but then they'd kind of forget and wander off. Uh, in Shadow of War, once you convert and dominate an orc uh, captain, the captains are your allies. They don't forget their personalities. They'll they'll talk to you. They'll you know they'll comment on things. So they're they're uh, they keep their personality. They keep their traits. You can level them up too. You can send them on missions to make them stronger. Um, and so and if you want, you can kill them and take their loot. Um, so you, you basically the captains uh, every. Uh, every one of the orcs in the hierarchy um, works that way. Then when you're out in the world, the orcs that aren't in the hierarchy, you can still dominate them. Once you get to a certain level, you can still dominate them and have them follow you. And so you can go around dominating everybody just like in Shadow of Mordor if you want, but you also get this added level of a deeper relationship with the captain orcs that you dominate and follow. And the other thing is they, once you dominate, they, they, can, they can decide they don't like you. They can switch sides. And so they, they have a mind of their own still. And so if they feel like, you know, if you leave them to bleed out and you come away, they might, you know, revive and then join the other side and, and come back and attack you. Um, the other thing is the way that the, you know, because there is different levels um, when you're um, not as strong as some of the high level orcs. Like you notice the uh, Overlord, I think, was level 43 or 45 um, and maybe Italian's level 20 or something. You can't dominate someone that's that far ahead of you. And so if you end up fighting him, you can actually um, lower his level. So you can actually basically um, shame him, which would make him lower level. So you can do that to get an orc. If you really want that orc in your army, but he's too high level, you can have, you have different strategies. You could go and work really hard to level yourself up, or you could level him down. And so that's a strategy to um, you know, kind of support that. And in some works, you can never dominate. They have a trait that, nope, you can't yeah, dominate. Yeah, I saw it on the uh, stats. Um, someone could be uh, dominated. Yeah. So it's a, it's a perk. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's so very deep. <laughs> it's really, really deep, and, um, but it's uh, all an action game. It yes. Is an action game. Yeah, you it's accessible. It action game. Yeah, you can play. And the other thing is, we have multiple difficulty modes because in the first game, we only had one difficulty yeah. and it was dynamic. And the problem that we realized is that some people it was too hard. And so they really hated the game because they would die, the orcs would get stronger, and then they just they felt like. They you. And, yeah. yeah, and they're getting stronger, yeah. you're getting weaker. And so that was really um, not a good experience for them. Other players were too good and the game was too easy. They never died. And if you don't die, you never experience the nemesis system. So they were like, eh, why is everybody talking about the nemesis system? I never, they, I never see it. Wasn't and then, me. yeah, and then most people were in the middle, and luckily <laughs> they were in the middle, and they, they died sometimes, but they could also, you know, kill the orcs, and so it was, you know, that's the way it was supposed to be. So now we have three difficulty levels. We have easy, which we, we call cinematic, which is basically if you just want to play the story, you don't want to work too hard, you don't want to worry about dying, and you just are kind of there for the story, you can just play on easy mode. We have normal, which is dynamic difficulty, which is basically if you want to play and get the nemesis system and have a, a challenging experience, you can play on normal, which is closer to like the, first the first game, game, like the first game. And then we have hard. If you're a really good player, you play on hard, and then you will have a challenge. It won't be easy. And so, yeah, it won't be easy. It'll be hard. And so uh, we hope that this will help to spread out and make you know kind of every type of player have a great experience with the game. I think that is a good decision. Wasn't mine. It was, uh, oh. it was our VP of creative. <laughs> cool. Okay. So thank you very much for yes. your time and um, yeah, can't wait of August. Uh, thank you. That's got me up. Spannend.